Eric Tov covering you. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. It's seemingly, uh, you would think things might cool down after the phone call with President Trump and President Putin, but it just does not slow down at all. Let me kind of share with you some different articles that have come out here in recent times. Rosetta.ru, this was on the 26th here. Uh, and very troubling article, uh, 26th of April uh, this year, 2017. The article is titled here, The Hidden Menace of the USA. Uh, and the man you see pictured on your screen is L Lieutenant General Victor uh, Posnaker. Now, Lieutenant General Posnaker here is uh, speaking not so much about the THAAD missile system, but about different deployments that are going on uh, in and around Europe. And as he states here, it is looking more and more like the United States is planning a preemptive strike uh, or something that could even lead to a nuclear war. Uh, let me share with you just a little bit of insight from this article here on Rosetta.ru and Google Translate here says the Russian Defense Ministry believes that the deployment uh, by Pentagon of its uh, anti-missile defense ABM bases in Europe and deployment of the anti-missile ships near Russian territory creates a powerful hidden component for a possible nuclear strike. This was stated on April the 26th at the briefing by the first deputy chief of the main operations headquarters, Russian Armed Forces, Viktor Puznikar, which he is a lieutenant general uh, for the Russian Armed Forces. And it's not only there, we're finding it everywhere. Newsweek also reporting the headlines here, Russian officials say U.S. global missile defense could lead to nuclear war in Europe. Of course, this is, uh, I don't know if they're citing the actual article, but I believe they are reciting the article from rosetta.ru when they speak about this in Newsweek. But it's very troubling, says top Russian officials have issued public warning about what they see as risk associated with U.S. extensive missile defensive system in Europe, clearly citing the article from Rosetta. Uh, doesn't stop there, though. China, Russia to counter Donald Trump's controversial THAAD missile shield uh, that was being deployed. This was an article that just came out on the Sydney Morning Herald. A uh, very concerning article, article indeed, that China and Russia were meeting to do something to counter the THAAD system that was deployed. That's a high-altitude system there that was deployed to Seoul, South Korea, uh, in, in the wake of China's protest and Russia's protest there. Kind of give you a little bird's eye view of this uh, particular uh, system here. Let me jump over here to Twitter. Alden uh, was sharing some of the pictures and images there, as you can see here on the screen and behind you, of this actual system. I kind of blow it up a little bit bigger there, maybe to help see this a little bit better on the screen there. This is the system right here. And, uh, of course... Uh, as we know, the United States has deployed this in South Korea because of the fears not only for Seoul, South Korea, but also for Japan, uh, the U.S. Uh, uh, ally, their ally in the region there, also worried about North Korea's nuclear capabilities and these type of missiles being fired there. Now, Russia and China claim that with it being a high altitude system, that it really poses no threat or no need for security for, for Seoul, South Korea. But I kind of differ with that a little bit because you got to keep in mind also of Japan. That system could knock out a missile that would be headed to Japan. But then again, the U.S. also has deployed their anti-missile uh, systems in Japan as well that can also knock down any type of incoming missiles. So is Russia and China's uh, fears justified? Well, possibly so, especially if we begin to look at some of the maps that, they, that we have out there of deployment of, like in this one here, this here, all the little blue dots on the screen and behind you here is U.S. Special Operations Forces deployed throughout the world. More than 100 countries uh, uh, or operations, I should say, that the forces are actually deployed at. And anyone can just take a look at China and Russia, pretty much, except for the northern side and the Antarctica there, excuse me, in the uh, North Pole, not Antarctica there, they are completely surrounded every direction you can imagine. Japan, South Korea, all the way around China, all the way around Russia, all through Europe, etc. And not only that, look at the U.S. bases. That's just special operation forces. But then we have U.S. bases everywhere, all over the place around Russia, uh, some of the most strategic places that could possibly be imagined. And it's not only the Russia and China maybe have a little bit of concern dealing with the THAAD missile system, but then you've also got, uh, looking at this map here, of course it's nothing, it doesn't really have any, any basis on what's going on with Russia or China, but I just put this up here so you can kind of get a little bit more of a bird's eye view. Our latest deployment from the United States is the United States Marine Corps adding more troops to Afghanistan, which kind of makes me wonder, 
Remember Lieutenant, Lieutenant uh, excuse me, General Wesley Clark, what he actually stated that uh, the United States was going to be doing a uh, takedown of, what was it, uh, seven Arabic nations, six Arabic nations over a five-year period. Of course, the timeline never was kept, but as we know, Iraq got took down. Syria is pretty much completely toast by now. Yemen, Libya, all these other countries, Egypt, all of them have been completely overrun and done exactly by that, by the uh, U.S. Uh, military. And I don't blame this on our U.S. military personnel. I come from a long line of military personnel in my own family as well. And, uh, and I know that most U.S. military men and women believe that they are serving uh, to, to for, for you know the protection of, of democracy around the world but you cannot help but wonder though if we're not fighting wars for uh, the shadow government and not so much that of the president of the United States the one that we elect that is helping us to keep our people safe but instead what are we causing nothing but death and destruction everywhere we go and of course we had justified invading Iraq over 9-11 when we know good and well that the Saudis were more involved in it than the Iraqis had anything to do with it. And of course, the mass destruction of weapons never did materialize. And why Syria? Well, maybe because Bashar al-Assad just doesn't want anything to do with uh, the, the Rothschild banking system, nor does he have anything to do with the GMO bans it from his own country. Kind of against the new world order. Can't have that either. Anyway, though, Iran is next on the target. Yes, they do seem to pose a threat to Israel, but it seems that their main threat against Israel is they do not like uh, the Israeli government that well. There, there's a lot of claim that Iran likes the Jewish people. Can't say that that's true myself. Uh, I wouldn't want to live in Iran as a Jew no matter what uh, th that may be the case of. But, uh, you know, I do know that Iran has, in, in, the, in the history of Iran, uh, have also shown kindness to the Jewish people in ancient history. Won't go into all that because that could really get into nothing but a big mess. So we continue on taking a look at what's going on. Now what's next to happen? The United States also conducting military drills uh, there inside of Alaska. They're over to the far east of Russia's northern border on that area there. We already know the F-35s, uh, not only the F-22s, F-35s uh, uh, doing military drills in Alaska right now, but U.S. has the F-35s now debuting in the Baltics on Russia's western border. Uh, they're all over the southern side. Israel also, uh, for the first time, debuted the F-35s in the air show inside of Israel. Uh, and now we're seeing that, according to Sputnik, China warns its citizens in North Korea to leave the conflict with U.S. looms. They're saying that they believe that uh, the U.S. may strike North Korea at any time and is warning their citizens to get out of Dodge. This is just not a good place to be. Uh, another article comes out as well. Sputnik, this came out today, same as the other one, where China is warning their citizens to get out of North Korea. Pyongyang. Excuse me, Pyongyang says U.S. B-1 drills push Peninsula closer to a nuclear war. Now, I'm assuming that what China is saying this by is that, uh, you know, that uh, Kim Jong-un would may end up pulling the trigger as a result of that. But anyway, Pyongyang is accusing the U.S. of edging the Korean Peninsula closer to war after U.S. B-1 strategic bombers flew over the Koreas as part of a drill with a regional air defense forces. The, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea said the flights basically amounted to a nuclear bomb drop drilling against major, uh, against major objects, according to North Korean official state news agency KCNA. The reckless provocations KCNA said is pushing the situation on the North Korean peninsula closer to the brink of nuclear war. No doubt it is. No doubt it is. Uh, Russian MOD slams, this is a different issue altogether, but Russian uh, the MOD slams the HRW allegations about use of Soviet chemical bomb in Syria. Now that's another issue altogether, and we need to really monitor this very closely. Sputnik News is bringing this out. And do keep in mind, friends, uh, many of you guys that do watch our program, I know most of you know the purpose that we that we scour Russian media is to bring the balance in the United States to kind of show what's going on on the other side of the world because we mainly only see what is being played in the United States such as CNN, Fox, and uh, MSNBC. Don't say any of these are, are, are really reliable. Uh, I'm sure some of them have some good points out there, but we try to show you the balance or at least let you know what they're thinking on the other side of the world. So. It's not that we are promoting that of Russia or China, any of these other nations here, but it's to bring you a balance in our reporting. 
Uh, so as we look at this here, this is very, but this here is very concerning to me. Russia's uh, mod slams HRW allegations about the use of Soviet chemical bomb in Syria. Now it looks like that they are trying to blame Russia for supplying a chemical weapon to the Syrian government. What are they doing? It is almost as if they're trying to find a way to justify a strike on Russia as well. They are looking for a way to declare war against Russia. That is majorly concerning to me. Um, let me just kind of give you a little bit of information in this article. The Russian Defense Ministry has dismissed a report issued by Western experts from the Human Rights Watch on the alleged use of a Soviet area, era chemical bomb in Syria as a fairy tale. Uh, they noted here today's marks precisely one month since the incident in Syria, Khan, uh, Sheikh Khan, where chemical weapons were allegedly used. However, neither the U.S. representatives nor the U.K., France, or roared about the chemical attack cannot present any concrete evidence to the public or the organization for the prohibition of chemical weapons. Only rumors and speculations based on social media data, which have been refuted by experts. The statement issued by Russian Ministry of Defense made this statement today. But they go on also to talk about that the bomb that, they, that the U.S. experts are saying that was used was a KHAB-250 aviation's ammunition, uh, and they were saying it had traces of sarin gas. And according to Russia, though, this bomb here was dismantled and has not been used since the 1960s. And also they argue that it doesn't have the, uh, the, 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 the uh, well, let me just read to you what it says here in a statement. Konashkinov also pointed out further dis discrepancies in the reports that the KHAB-250 bomb have never been uh, uh, exported outside of Russia and were dismantled in the 1960s. Konashkinov stressed that the Soviet-era KHAB-250 bomb, which according to the HRW report, had alleged been used in Syria, uh, was never de designed to contain any sarin nerve gas. The ministry pointed out that the Soviet-era KHAB-250 bomb does not have a filler port with safety caps. The KHB-250 were refilled through a special side vent. Uh, Kanashkanov also said that the KHAB-250 could never leave a crater as they exploded in the air at the height of 30 to 70 meters uh, above the ground. So once again, what are they doing? They are fabricating information to tr try now, not just to indict Bashar al-Assad, now they want to blame the Russians for doing it. You know, the more they pump this kind of garbage in the American public, the greater that people end up believing this nonsense only to justify more and more war. And this is exactly what the uh, military industrial complex would like. They figure the only way to pay off the national debt is to have more and more wars. And well, maybe also China, take out China while you're at it. You know, by the way, China has a huge, uh, you know, we have a huge uh, debt with them anyway. If you take out the banker, eliminate the banker, well, what do you know? You don't have to worry about returning and paying your debt. That might work, might, shouldn't it? It is all ludicrous if you, if you ask me. Just completely ludicrous what's going on. Anyway, guys, this is the type of reporting that we're trying to bring out. And of course, maybe we may be looking at bringing this on uh, satellite television in America. Again, we need your support. You believe that that's something that would benefit uh, the American people to see a balance in reporting. Try to be a bit more professional than what I do here, but anyway, uh, definitely show us that. Show us, you know, send us an email, even if you can't help financially to support that type of endeavor, just let us know by email you support this and you think it would be a blessing to the American people. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching the Daily News.